Maria promised me her time last night, but uh, Dr. Schosser just took that all from me. The good news is he covered a lot of stuff that I wanted to, so we've got a little bit of a head start. Um, so the, the, the main message here is that uh, we, we want to look at patients as collabor collaborators, not subjects, and we want to feel as patients as collaborators and not subjects. Um, this is an important thing for moving forward. Um, quick intro on me, I'm Ryan Colburn, uh, 35 years old, born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Um, I get, you, we, we often ask as we meet each other in these, in these situations, uh, how long have you had Pompeii? And, and I laugh because my answer is my whole life, but I was diagnosed, which is what you're really asking, uh, four years ago, just a few, few weeks before this conference. Um, my mutations are up there. Um, thanks, Mom, for, 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 the, for the, uh, uh, the common one. Uh, which is a, a much better outcome. Um, but, but the thing that, that is, is really interesting is, is even though I've only had symptoms or only been diagnosed for, for four years now, when I look back, I have had very clear symptoms since early childhood, um, uh, looking at home, old home video and these kinds of things. Um, a little bit about me, just because it helps to, to understand where, where my perspective comes from. Uh, for, for work, I, I work at a company where, where we're really uh, excited to work towards uh, enabling a future amongst the stars. Um, and, and I've learned something that from, from there that I want to share with you guys that, that I try to bring to this community, um, which is that if we're excited about the future, uh, and there's some, some elements about the future that, we're super, that, that, that seem really cool to us, then why wouldn't we really try to aggressively run towards that future? Um, and I think that that, that that note rings true in this community as well. Um, four years ago, I didn't know what rare diseases were. Um, I, I do now. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, it's been it's been a, a fun experience to get um, sort of thrown into this world and um, and have the opportunity to learn and meet so many people and hear so many inspiring stories. Um, so rare disease stuff, super cool. Um, and then sports. I grew up playing hockey. Still love it. Um, but but most sports I'm, I'm into. Um, so quick note on the theme. Um, Dr. Dr. Schosser already did it did a, a raise of hands of who's participated in a clinical trial in any capacity. Um, we'll talk about drug trials a, a little bit in this, in this discussion, uh, but I think we've covered that well. And, and if, you're, if you've not participated in trial or you're curious how your trial experience compares with somebody else's, uh, I think the best thing to do is, is, is make a friend at lunch, um, talk, talk, ask your personal questions, um, figure out what the experiences are, trade, trade experiences. Um, we're going to learn a lot more that way than, than me telling you uh, what my experience is in that. Um, the other thing is, is it's a little bit, uh, it's not lost on me that uh, we're talking, giving a presentation on participation to a room full of people who uh, flew out here through storms to get here. Um, so we're, we're already speaking to an engaged crowd, which is, uh, represents the best of the, of the rare disease community. Um, we need to get more of that and, and recruit more of that. Um, secondly, is, is this is a patient's perspective, but I hope that, uh, uh, that, that it's not just falling on the ears of, of, the, of the other people with Pompeii in the room, um, that it also um, speaks to the wonderful cross-section of our ecosystem that we have represented, um, including all of our families and our researchers and, and coordinators and doctors and advocates and, and, and so on. So patient participation, uh, why does it matter? Um, it matters because we have a lot left to learn, and, and, and I think that's, that's one of the, the big messages that, that we hear um, throughout the morning so far, and I think we'll, we'll hear about some of these ideas about ways we can learn new things going forward. Um, but but there's, there's, I think there's more left to learn than, than we already know. Um, and and why, do, why does the patient specifically matter in that role? Um, and, and to do this, I was going to pick on one of the, uh, one of the front row of, of um, expert researchers that I admire up here. But, I realized I can't outrun any, any of them, so I, I, I'm going to keep it generic. Um, I have 35 years of experience with Pompeii. My body has inside of it uh, 35 years of, of, of experience with what those two mutations do to a body. Um, if you take a generic researcher that went to at, right out of university and, and started researching and spent 12 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for a wonderful 50-year career, they would have amounted 25 years of experience uh, in Pompeii. Um, and it's not to say that they're the same experience, of course, but, uh, but, but to recognize that, that, that both are important. And, uh, and, and for patients, if you feel sort of intimidated or, or unsure because you 
uh, don't have a scientific background or, or, or you don't know what you can bring to the table, um, your experience actually brings quite a lot to the table. And, and um, we learn how to ask questions that help us to, to gain the knowledge that we need um, by, 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 by interacting uh, with, with, with the whole community um, and sharing what our experiences are. Um, so this one, this one really matters quite a lot to me. Um, I mentioned on the topic of learning that we, that we have a lot left to learn. Uh, I, I think maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do this the easier way than, than saying who still has questions about Pompeii. Um, by a show of hands, who does not have any questions, knows everything that they want to know about Pompeii? <laughs> All right, cool. So my estimation is, is that we, we, we collectively know maybe 5 to 20 percent of all that there is to know about Pompeii. And you may not agree with this number, but I made it up, so there's no point in arguing it. Um, and and, and that, seem, that, that, can, that can seem a little bit scary that, that it seems like we know so little, but really it's, it's getting that first amount of knowledge from, from nothing that is, is, is really a difficult part. And we, we can um, stand on the, on the shoulders of, of, of an outstanding, uh, wonderful patient community and experience over the last 20, 30 years that has, has really driven us to the point now um, where, we've, where we've learned and seen that, that the, the, the outcomes are completely different. Um, I suspect that the goal is not 100%. I, I think that we we'll probably need to get to 60 or 70% uh, is my gut feel for, uh, for, for knowing the things to know about Pompeii, um, where we have a functional obsolescence of the disease, where, we, where it's no longer what we, what we uh, think it is now. Um, so it's not, it's not that far away. Um, the next reason why it matters to, to, for, for patients to participate um, is momentum. And we talk about momentum a lot when we're talking about any kind of project where we, where we aspire to, to achieve some, some, some sort of progress. Um, but for momentum to be sustainable, it really has to start with the patients. Um, to say this in, in, in sort of a, 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 a different way, um, if we as patients do not show uh, our interest through our participation, then how can we expect anybody else to? Um, this is a really important, interesting part of, of human psychology, how, how well we, we go along with, with, the, with the crowds and with, um, with, with wanting to be a part of something. Um, so if we are in very engaged as a patient community, if we are, are willing collaborators and participants, um, then that will, that will draw further interest from the other parts of the ecosystem that, that are so important. Um, we're going to ask more questions. We're going to have uh, more, more opportunities to answer those questions. Um, and our learning is really going to take off. So the message here is really um, action uh, uh, is the foundation of progress. Um, to achieve momentum in, in, from the physics perspective, we're going to look at mass times velocity. And, and I don't think we really want to try to say, hey, patients run faster, um, literally. We probably want to say, let's get a lot more of us in, and, and, and achieve momentum that way. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities now that weren't here uh, before um, that, that make this a, an exciting period. Um, so the, the, the last reason why it matters and why it matters now is that uh, it's a solvable problem. Um, we can change the trajectory for, for, for the patients in this room. For we can change my trajectory, we can change each of our trajectories um, with, with, with where we're at right now and the knowledge base. Um, equally as important, we have an opportunity to prevent future, the future us from experiencing any degradation of health. Um, the, 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 there was 20 kids, more than 20 kids, born yesterday uh, around the world with Pompeii. Um, there's another 20 today and be another 20 tomorrow. Um, and, and you kind of get the idea there. And each one of those kids is, is, is us. Um, and we have an opportunity to help future us to, to not experience any of the negatives. Um, so that seems like that's something that's worth, um, worth putting, in, putting in some time for. So patient participation, how do you do it? Um, if you have Pompeii disease, you are already participating. It, 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 it may not be desirable, but it's, but it's true. So from there, it's really about deciding on, on what terms you want to participate, choosing, um, choosing your path. Um, so as Dr. Schoester uh, in, introduced, uh, clinicaltrials.gov is a great resource for that. It's a collective of, of all the publicly and privately funded um, studies done around the world. Um, and, and this is just a, a quick summary of what's going on uh, on clinicaltrials.gov as of yesterday. Um, there's a sneaky thing, there's like three more studies hidden under uh, expanded access. 
So there's, there's 107 listed there, um, 25 of which are recruiting. A um, couple, couple things to mention from a, from a patient perspective uh, is that it's a very personal decision on, on how you want to participate. Um, and and, and I, I really um, urge you to make that decision for yourself uh, without any kind of judgment uh, or fear of judgment from, from the rest of the community. Um, we, we all have different stuff going on and, and, and that, th th those factor into it. Some of the considerations that, that I think um, float to the top for me um, or, or from folks that I talk with um, that, that you might want to look at when, I, when you say, should I participate in this study, um, is what is the value of the thing that we're going to learn through this study? And do I believe in that? Do I, do I, do I want to contribute to that? Um, what is the difficulty of the protocol? And those two should be, should be in a little bit of a balance. Um, if, if the difficulty of it is very low, the answer should almost always be yes. If, if it takes very low commitment or resource from you, you should have a, a, a default answer of yes, I'll, I will participate. Um, this is my opinion, again, without judgment, although that sounded very judgy. Um, if, if, if the commitment is, is, is high, but the value is high, then, then that's also probably right in the area that you want to that you want to participate in. Um, you should, we, we should not place the, the weight of expectation that, that we're going to achieve a benefit out of a trial on it. I, I think that's unfair to the, to the science, um, but it's, it's impossible to ignore that there is, uh, for certain types of trials, the potential for a benefit uh, for, your, for yourself and then also for, again, future you. Um, you have to look at the time commitment. How does that fit, how does that fit in with your other priorities and your other commitments? Um, and then reimbursement, uh, the, the trials and, and, and sort of this whole rare disease life can, can, can add up on expenses. So um, really making sure and, and fighting for, for yourself that, that we're being covered in that regard. Um, we, we talked a, a lot about, uh, Dr. Choser covered a lot about um, drug trials in, in, in specific. Um, so that there's, there's all sorts of cool stuff going on uh, with, I guess I'll call experimental drugs, whether they be adjunct therapies, um, uh, ERT, uh, new, new, new gene therapies uh, in the future, um, some, other, some other genetic uh, modifications. Um, but, but I also want to highlight that there's a bunch of other studies and a bunch of other uh, needs for, for answers to questions that we ask um, that, that we get out of uh, registries and surveys and, and um, natural history and observational studies. There's, there's studies that, that, have foc that focus on uh, new techniques to identify what's going on inside of your body, ideally non-invasive techniques. Um, so there, 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 there's those kind of studies you can participate in. Um, there's biomarker development and processing, and we heard about newborn screening a little bit earlier. That didn't come out of thin air. We had to learn what to look for in the, min in the most minimally invasive sample in the most streamlined way so we can do it quickly. Um, that took a study to, to, to develop and um, has room for further development, as, we, as we've also, he also heard. Um, and then there's the stuff that we can do for ourselves, uh, the diet and exercise, and trying to, to finally come con to conclusion. It's one of the most common questions I hear amongst the patient community is, what can I do to help myself? And uh, I think we have a lot of ideas and a lot of theories and a lot of personal experience with that, but, but there's, there's studies out there to do that as well. Um, one other thing I just wanted to, t to highlight in here, because I, 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 it, it ties to that, that initial comment about chasing something exciting. Um, when we look at, at of the studies that are actively actively um, shown on, on clinicaltrials.gov, there's 25 that are recruiting, and, and that means that they haven't hit their close date yet, but they expect almost a five-year uh, window uh, uh, for study duration. And if we're only learning new things or answering questions in five-year periods, um, it's going to take a really long time to do that. Um, there, there's some there's some some types of studies, the, the longitudinal long-term safety, where you do need that time. But there's a lot of this that's driven by enrollment and driven by ability to ask the question in the right way and measure the outcomes in the right way. Um, so there's, there's a big challenge, I think, for all of us in the room, patients on the participation side and the uh, contributing ideas side for how we measure the things that actually matter. And then also from the researching community, how do we get this, this time to answer questions so we can answer questions at a lot faster pace? Because um, we need that for, for, for realizing real progress. So. Uh, Parti patient participation towards a cure. Um, what does a cure mean to you? Uh, I think it probably means something different to, to, to each of us in the room, um, even though directionally we're, we're all in the same place. Uh, for me, a cure is, is something like picturing um, 
a, a new parent in the hospital uh, being told that their kid, being told within 24 hours that, the, that their kid was caught with newborn screening for having Pompeii, and them having a, a, a look of relief over their face and saying, oh, thank you, I, th I thought you were going to say that they had an ear infection. Um, I, I think getting Pompeii to that level where it is um, well managed, well understood, um, and, 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 and treatable um, to the point where we're preventing symptoms um, is, is a very achievable goal. When I look at where this community was, I, I look back at where this community was, as I, as I understand it, um, trying to, to catch up with some of the history of it, um, 20 years ago, um, when, when that same parent would have, uh, would, have, would have been diagnosed clinically at four to eight months and, and lost their child shortly thereafter, um, all that seems possible. Um, we don't have that situation. Now, we heard about kids going to college. We heard about, um, we heard about all these uh, wonderful stories, and, and those are just the first ones that, that, that happen to be born at the right time. Um, we can change that with, w going forward um, for the next ones. So I think that one is, is, is worth aspiring to and, and, and doing with, with urgency and excitement. Um, when I look around, um, we've got lots of heroes among us. There's, there's folks in this room um, that, that have led to, to the, 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 the changes and, and created the change that we've seen in the last 20 years that wouldn't have happened without them. Um, going forward, I hope to spread the load. Uh, I, I think relying on heroes is, is really great, and I hope that we have a, at least a few that come along as well. Um, but, but I think that if we, can, if we can all share it and carry it, um, it's a better strategy. Um, we've heard a lot this morning that, that about low, low numbers uh, of samples, low sample sizes, um, and, and the need for data. And, and data really is everything. Um, and, and newborn screening is a huge deal for, for uh, the obvious reasons we've, we've heard about this morning, that, that it's um, saving lives for that 20% for that of, of, of infantile onset patients. Um, but it's also a really big deal for, um, for, for a few other reasons. Um, it, it, it lays the groundwork for us to grow the ecosystem to accelerate results. Um, and everything about this is, again, about back to that momentum, how, how do we recruit? So the first and, and, and most important part of it is, is more patients. Um, we're learning in new, from newborn screening that, that everything looks like we're, we're around 1 in 13,000 as, as an incidence rate. Um, it, this is a, an open question. Uh, does anybody think that we've diagnosed more than 10,000 so far to date? I, don't, it, it, I thought that was a high guess. I, I went with it just for the sake of, of, of a comparison. Um, so if we assume that we've diagnosed 10,000 folks worldwide to date, um, that means that we're diagnosing at a rate of 1 in 740,000. Um, so 60 times lower than the actual prevalence. So to say it another way, for every one of us uh, folks with Pompeii in the room, there's 60 others out there that do not have a diagnosis in the world. Um, that's, a, that's a great way to recruit new patients. Um, so we've got to close that gap. Um, with newborn screening, um, we're, we're, we're diagnosing about half the U.S. population uh, with the 21 states that are live. Um, we, we got, I think South Carolina was like a couple months ago, up from 20. So uh, with the 21 states that are live. So we're getting about half. Um, Taiwan, you guys are doing 100%. Um, I, I'm not that familiar with the efforts elsewhere in the world, but we're getting a, we're getting a lot of new recruitment that way and a new opportunity to help answer and ask a lot of new questions. So more patience is, is hugely important, and we've got um, newborn screening as, as, the, as, as a huge strategy there, but then the other one is just, I think, going to be an awareness thing so that we can pick up the, the rest that we're missing. Um, so more patients being diagnosed and more patients being engaged. Uh, elevating the patient roles to collaborators will help uh, garner more investment of time and energy and, and, and funds, uh, creating more research, more industry involvement, more uh, pharma push, more in, uh, insurance push, more auxiliary equipment push, et cetera. Um, and, and that's why it's important for, for patient participation. We, we're, we're the ones that have to, um, to, to lead uh, by, by example, show our energy and, and, and match the energy that we were getting from everybody else uh, and, then, and then recruit new people in the space. That was supposed to be a backup slide, so there we go. Thank you.